we do with this salmon, this canned eat salmon? It. <laughs> well, yeah, I know, but how would we eat it? You can eat it right out of the jars, just that way. Or you can mix it with anything, onion, or make patties out of it. Do whatever it calls for salmon. Okay. Hi, I'm Rich with Hunter's Choices, and today we're going to be doing some canning of fish. Now, if you were a sportsman and you've got a freezer, it's not a question of whether your freezer became unplugged and you lost all your meat or not. It's a question of how many times have you lost everything that's in your freezer. So canning is another option we can use to preserve our meat. Now, canned salmon just tastes fantastic. Canned salmon will last in the jar for about five years. It won't stay on the shelf that long. Once you start trying salmon that you can, you'll want to do it more often. But through the canning, I wanted to get an expert in here, someone who's done some canning before. So the only one I knew that's done a lot of canning before is, basically I grew up with it. So I got mom involved to show us how to run the pressure cooker and, and the canning process. Hi, I am Margie McNutt, Rich's mom. Mom's going to be showing Emily how to can. Hi, I'm Emily Bublitz and this is Hunter's Choice's Wild Things cooking show. So should we get the jars ready first? Yep, so the first thing we're going to do is wash the jars. Being sure that there's no cracks on the top of the jars or that a jar isn't cracked on the side. So do we need to yeah. check the tops? Yep. Just check the tops for Put them in your water. Cracks. So what's the difference between canning fish and canning vegetables? I've canned tomatoes, I've canned pickles, but I've never canned fish. So what's, what's the different process or? Well, canning fish or meat of any kind. You don't uh, add any liquid to your jars. You, it's all meat and then a little bit of salt and that makes its own liquid in the jar. When it's cooking? As it is processing. Now, these are used lids. We can't use those, can we? I don't use any lids that are used. Okay, so I'll move those. And then, then what do we do with these and lids? Then what we'll do is put about an inch of water, or just throw those in there, put them in, and run water on top of them. Cover them, put them apart, usually so that they go. These are large lids, um, curved lids. Whoops. Is that about an inch of water? Yeah, and then put it on the stove and let's bring that to a boil. And can I take them apart? Yep, you can take them apart if you want. These are new lids. The large mouth lids because we're using large mouth glass jars, which is easier to put fish and meat into if you use large mouth. Uh, good. Put it on high. So then we put the lids in water. Yeah, but it's not on yet. Yep, turn it off. How do I turn it off? Some more. There you go. Oh, and then turn it back to high. <laughs> so we turn, we put them in a pan, put them on the stove. And you're gonna bring, bring it to a boil. Bring it to a boil, okay. Yeah, and then let them set in there until we pack the jars, and then we'll put the lid on it. Okay. Now here's our piece of salmon. Here's our piece of salmon, and we're gonna and take we, a knife. Big knife, small knife the knife we had to... This big knife? Yep. Now we're going to cut these just about what it thinks. Probably here. We'll cut it. And then we'll sort of roll it up. 
let's stick it right in that jar. And we can use another little piece of it. So do we need to leave any space between the fish and where the lid's gonna be? Right about that. Oh, much. okay. Yeah. And then we'll do it this one. Are there bones in are there bones in this fish? If there is, we're gonna leave them in, but it don't look like there is in this piece of so we don't need to worry salmon. About bones, we don't okay. have to. Even if there was, you would put them right in this jar too, and it would. Uh, they'll cook, and you can take them out the same as what you would do salmon out of a can. So then you're going to cut another piece and just fill that jar I'm gonna in completely. Fill, yeah, I'm going to fill it, and we may end up only with three or four pints here. Okay. These little pieces that have fallen off, do we put those in you with can, it or not? You can throw them in there too. Okay. And they don't really have to be full, they, just so that they, we get the fish in there. Okay. And now we want... No, no liquid, right? No liquid. No liquid. Um, now we'll put a half teaspoon in each jar. Actually, this one really don't have as much as what should be in it, but... I have a teaspoon? That's all we got. Yep. That's regular table salt. So. This is a half a teaspoon. Okay. <laughs> Looks big when it's shining in there. So just sprinkle it on top or dump it just in? Just dump it in. Yeah. Make sure it's just a teaspoon so you don't get it too salty. A level teaspoon? Yeah. Not a heaping teaspoon, a, a level, level teaspoon. Level measuring teaspoon of salt. Okay. And if you were doing it in quart jars, you would have a teaspoonful a quart. Okay. He just said okay, now, this is just starting to boil. Yes. Now, so turn it off? Yeah, it's heated up. The, what we're trying to do is just warm up that uh, rubber that's on the inside of those lids. I'm thinking that this has got enough uh, juice in it. <coughs> so we're just going to put one of those lids on the top and what we need to do is wipe off every top first. With like a dish cloth? With a paper towel you can use. So wipe wipe each top off. Yep. The paper towel. Yep. It, that's so th because if you have any little particles under there your lid is not going to seal tightly to the jar and they're gonna unseal. Now then you put a ring on. Mm -hmm. Now do you have to work fast? You don't have to work fast with no. this like you do with nope. tomato juice or anything else. These are really hot. Yeah, and I do have a thing to take those out of there with. Oh. Real tight? Not nah, just just medium. Do they tighten more as they're cooking? No, uh -uh. but they will. The heat pulls the lid down to make them seal. That's what we... So do they seal while they're in the pressure cooker? While they're in the pressure cooker, and sometimes when you, when you take them out, they will, you'll hear them popping, which is, which is sealing. Okay, so there's yeah, there's steam, steam coming, coming out the out front. So turn the it front. So our gasket isn't in all the way. So we're going to shut it off. Turn it off. Yep. Yeah. And move the pressure cooker over onto the other burner so it but cools. But don't out. take anything off. Just nope. move it over. Just move it over. And since there is no pressure in there, we can open it. Okay. Just make sure you pick up the back side of it first, so you don't get burned. So turn it to. The arrows on open. 
Yeah, you'll see when you can pick up the back side. And lift the back off? Yeah. Whoa. Now you shouldn't need that. You're going to slip out of your hands with that. Just turn it upside down on the counter. Okay, we took the cover back off because it was leaking and I'm gonna push this gasket back in. There's a rubber gasket here and it slipped out. So I'm gonna push it all the way back in. And that's it's out a little over here too. That's why the steam was coming out? That's why the steam is coming out. Why can't there, why can't we have steam coming out? Because it'll take all the water out of your jars that it's building up. Okay. Should do it. Is this where the 10 pounds is right there? Uh -huh. okay. There's a lot of times if you, if that gasket don't want to stay in there, you can take it out of there and you can stretch it. Oh. You stretch the whole gasket and then put it back in. But you have to watch if it's an older gasket, it could break and then you have to go buy a new one. So you can replace you those can gaskets? You can replace the gaskets. So can yeah. you can anything in a pressure cooker? You can can most stuff in the pressure cooker, but be sure you have your directions that on how to do it. Okay. And be sure you read how to work your pressure cooker too. So. I've heard they're real sensitive. I, I don't find that the, they're real sensitive, not the canning ones. Now you can get the, just a regular pressure cooker. Well, okay. This is a pressure canner. So, so there's a pressure cooker and there's a pressure canner. There's pressure cookers that have little things that vibrate on them. That's, well, I, I know a girl I that used, if you can can in them. I she used to cook them. like a roast in a pressure cooker. Yeah. So that's a pressure cooker. Yeah, that's pressure different cooker. than this. This is a canner. This a pressure nothing canner. opens, nothing flutters, nothing does it. That steam has got to be kept on the inside oh, okay. all the time. Oh, okay. Wait again until we see steam coming out. Hopefully it'll come out in the right place. Uh, so we want about a, a inch, inch and a half of water in the bottom of our pressure cooker. About an inch and a half? Yeah. It, let me see what have we got in there right now. We only got about a half an inch. So take your bowl, take your bowl and put some in and dump it in there. And we need to put it back here on the burner. No, do you want to put it on the biggest burner on the stove? Mm -hmm. Okay. Don't make any difference actually how long you want to take to cook. Let's just, just a, little more. a little more. That should be plenty. See what we got. Okay, and then we'll set our jars right so in there. Another, no, this wire basket stays the in there. Wire basket has to be in there. Okay. Some sort of uh, wire down in the bottom. So you're not so they aren't sitting right on the sit bottom. On the bottom, right. So then just put these right in there? Yep. Should they not be touching or can they be touching? They can be touching, it don't matter, but we only have four so they don't have to. They won't be touching. So they don't. They don't have to be covered with water or anything? Nope, not in a pressure cooker. Okay. No, nope. that's what, uh, when you would do tomato juice, vegetables, or something and you're cooking in a kettle, you would have to cover them. In a pressure cooker, you don't, you don't have it's to. It's only that much water, always. Okay. When you cook I've never a used a pressure cooker, cooker okay. so. So then here. we put the lid on? Yep. And the screws on? See, there's a little arrow right there. It goes right over, open, and then push it till it closes all the way. Okay. There you go. Now turn it on high. Turn it on high. And it's a little high, harder to do with the electric stove than what it is with gas because we're going to be watching it pretty close. And we're going to leave this go now until that whole stream of steam comes out of this. Out of this hole right here? Yeah. Mm -hmm. A stream of steam will come out. Mm -hmm. how long that will, how that'll long? take however high we got the stove on. It could take 10 minutes, it could take 5, but we just wait and that's what we go by when the bunch of steam comes out of there. And then what do we do? 
and then we're going to put the petcock on. Okay. And then we start timing. So all you have to do now is it's not going to do anything other than build up pressure on the inside so we can clean up, we can do anything we, don't we want. We do anything until steam nope. starts coming out nope. that hole. Nope. Okay. Nothing other than clean up. Or so we can clean up. Okay, your pressure cooker is going to make a few strange sounds and that's just because the water is heating up on the inside and the pressure is, is building up. And we're going to wait until the steam comes out of the petcock hole before we put the petcock on. Can you see the steam that's coming real good out of there? So now that it's coming out Now steady, we're going to put the petcock on. And that's because the steam was coming out steady? Yep, because the steam time. was coming out real good. So does that just sit on top or does it screw This on? one just sets on. There's one I have screws on a little and there's one that just, uh, uh, just a one turn. And we're going to leave this go now until it gets to 10 pounds of pressure. And then we have to start timing it for 90 minutes. When it hits 10 pounds of pressure? Yep. This is getting almost to 10 pounds of pressure now and I'm going to start turning my stove down because it's going to stay hot and it's going to keep on going up. Uh, and as I turn the stove down, it will keep it at 10 pounds of pressure. If it goes a little bit over 10 pounds of pressure, that's fine. Just don't let it go below 10 pounds of pressure. If it goes below, do you have to turn the stove up again? Yeah, if it goes below. Yeah, we're almost on the 10 pounds of pressure now, so. So it's 433? No, 427. 90 minutes we're gonna. Are we setting a timer for this? Yeah. And so now we're on just a hair over 11 or 10, so I'm going to keep turning it down. But you can't turn it too much or it'll go below 10 pounds of pressure. You don't want that. So do you need to pretty much stay pretty much by it? Close to 10 as, as much as you can. And you need to kind of stay right by the stove, keeping an eye yeah, on that? Yeah, pretty much until you get it kind of regular, until you get it down your stove down to where it goes. What do you mean down to where it goes? Down to the 10 pounds of pressure. Oh, okay. Down the stove down to where it'll keep it at 10 oh, pounds okay. of pressure. So when it's steady at 10 pounds? Yeah. And, it's and then after that it's done? After that, you take the pressure cooker and set it over and let it, let this go all the way to zero by itself. Don't touch nothing else. Don't take the cover off. Until Don't it do hits anything. The zero. Yep. Okay. And then you could take the pet cup off and you can open your kettle. Okay. There you go. You can push the button for that, shut the stove off. Okay, our nine shut the stove off. Our ninety minutes are up. Yep. So we shut the stove off yep, and just, just put move the this over. pressure cooker over onto the other burner. It's kind of hot. Don't let it slip on your hand because it's heavy. Now we're going to leave that until it goes back to zero. So when this gets down to zero, it, we then can we open, open it up. We open the cover, we can take the pet cock off. Okay. up lay it over but don't hit your set gauge on the counter okay now leave it there and take this thing and this is what and you need a pot holder to now this is the way this works it goes like this and you let it up and it'll hook around the top of the jar and then you keep your hand in here when you take it out don't push down this way or you'll drop your jar okay and then carry the jars over there. Mm -hmm. Put it on top of your potholder so you don't 
burn yourself and just set them over here. This one here, and they're all sealed already because the tops are down. These lids are all down. If they were not sealed, they would jump up and down when you push on them. So we know that this one here has a lot of juice in it because we had packed more fish in it. It was tighter. And in these trees, we haven't got as much fish in, so they don't have as much juice. It doesn't hurt anything. They're still yeah. fine. Yeah. Okay, now what, still fine. what would we do with this? Yeah, I know, but how would we eat it? <laughs> you can eat it right out of the jars, just that way. Or you can mix it with anything, onion, or make patties out of it. Do whatever it calls for salmon. Okay. Become a wild game cooking master by watching our professional chefs show us how to prepare outstanding wild game meals, desserts, and side dishes. Thanks for watching the Wild Things Show Cooking Wild Game. This is Rich McNutt. Enjoy.